All right, so it's been a while since I've done a video about Harry or Meghan, and uh, the reason is uh, they're just not doing anything anymore. You need to move on with your lives, you sick bastards. However, every now and again, they uh, they do do something, and uh, <laughs> uh, I feel compelled to comment on it. And today just so happens to be one of those happy occasions. I think you're really going to enjoy today's video. Uh, <laughs> I know I am. Oh, Daniel Bolland, this is a heavy hitter. Do you guys know who this is? All right, so I'm going to try in this video today, I'm going to really try to choose my words carefully because I don't want to be known as somebody who just gratuitously tries to offend people. Okay, I, the last thing I want to be is some kind of Ricky Gervais-esque wannabe edgelord, uh, trying to say all the unsayable things. You know, that is the last thing I want. However, at the same time, I do want to convey the absolute cringe, the insanity of the events that unfolded the other day when Megan decided <laughs> to uh, descend from her ivory tower and bestow a bunch of disabled children with her impromptu presence uh, <laughs> at their uh, hospice or whatever it was. I don't know what it was. We'll find out together, all right? Meghan Markle turns storyteller during heartwarming visit to Children's Hospital. Now hold your horses, all of you, in the comments. I can hear you all typing away, right, that this isn't funny, this isn't the sort of thing that should be laughed at, right? And I've got a number of things I could say to that. The short thing, the shortest answer I could give you is, uh, let's agree to disagree, okay? But I know some of you are doing it for my benefit. You're doing it for my sake. Uh, you're thinking, uh, Danny, you're going a bit too far, calm as a bitch. Uh, how would you feel in this situation? And I hear you, okay? The last thing I would want, I cannot imagine how awful it would be having to go and read stories to a bunch of re... to a bunch of... Coloreds. I would hope that it goes without saying that the object of my humour, the butt of my jokes, is not going to be these poor kids in the hospital, alright? However, I would say this. <laughs> they do add to the overall weird atmosphere, the sensation of not being able to laugh in the funeral, of uh, Meghan Markle visiting and reading stories to a bunch of disabled kids. Now, there is nothing wrong with that. If you do that anonymously, uh, if you just do that out of the kindness of your heart, it's something that you've done for a long time. But she's going there with a big film crew and flash photography, and all of these poor kids they think Spider-Man's coming to play games with them. They're all getting worked up, and they're not going to blow off any steam. They don't know who Meghan Markle is. They haven't got a fucking clue. Who, the, half of these kids can barely recognise their own reflection. No, I'm joking. <laughs> they don't know who she is. They're not doing anything. They're listening to her monotonous, droning voice for a couple of hours. Uh, they're getting all wound up by the flashes of the f f photographers, right? And uh, and then, uh, you know, it's going to be mayhem. Bedlam. It really is. They're going to have to be hosing them down with freezing showers. And uh, oh, I'll tell you what, the ECT room's going to be overbooked tonight. You want to have some of them you can pick up? They're so funny, those little girls. Yeah, I'm not sure what Megan's on about there. But anyway, the, just, just a quick point here, just about this uh, general scene. Why is it, and anyone who lives in California can tell me now in the comments, why is it that the only places left on Earth that still think you have to wear a mask all day and all night in all places are California and Beijing? Eh? Even over here in the glorious People's Republic of Spain, where I live, where I thought we'd never see the day, we left that behind years ago. All right? Get over it. What do you think? You're going to become more retarded if you don't wear your masks all the time. You'll be fine. Take them off. <laughs> mm, I 
see why she didn't bring Harry along. A like show like that could really set off one of Harry's more violent ayahuasca flashbacks. <laughs> Oh, a seal opera. Great ones here. Oh, yeah. This is one of my favorites. Her great great aunt Rose was a true dynamo who'd worked building airplanes a long time ago. <sighs> Megan, forty-two, got into character as she read Rosie the Riveter. That night, as Rosie lay wide-eyed in bed, a daring idea crept into her head. Did you know that cheddar cheese rig keeps the snakes away? Whoa. I didn't know that. Well, that is riveting. Uh, Rosie the Riveter sure does what she says on the tin. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to make the video funny, but I, I do have a soft spot for um, whatever this is. I mean, I know it's a bit of a cringe photo op, this Meghan Markle reading stories to kids, but... Uh, <laughs> There's something about people, <laughs> however insincere it is, at least appearing to be nice and spend time with kids. It's a little bit, um, it's pleasant to see, you know? Anyway, on with the sneering sarcasm. Hmm? That's my trademark. She turned around to leave. But then great grand Aunt Rose grabbed hold of the great book. It's such a great book. Pete the cat and I saw a cat to the youngsters at the Children's Hospital Los Angeles during an outing last Thursday. In a heartwarming video, the mum of two was seen engaging the children as she asked them questions involving counting, colours and problem solving. Counting, colours and problem solving, but no archetypes. Aw, oh, now nah, she's probably saving that for the autistic ward. Can you imagine how autistics would react to Meghan Markle? A woman who communicates exclusively through long-winded and often meaningless analogies. They would go, <laughs> they'd go even mentaler. Another one, right? Oh, oh, that's right, three. It's a three, four. Dolphin rolled away. Well, now how many buttons are left? One. 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 Exactly right. Two. No. Oh, ow. Oh, no. Oh, no. The last button popped off and it rolled away. Oh. Friends, how many buttons are left? You're right. Zero. Oh, no. My two groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons. All right, I could get behind the song, my two groovy buttons, but buttons, my two groovy But I was all into that until I saw this cook, right, in the corner. What's he doing there? You know, with the two buttons behind his mask. I don't even have them. I can't even imitate him because I don't own a mask. All right, I don't mean to scare any Californians listening, but that's just how based I am. Okay, um, but no, seriously, this guy, the good doctor here, he is a medical physician, okay, not a performing seal, okay, all right, we'll throw you in the sea, and it's teeming with killer whales. My two groovy buttons. And the oh. mouse saw that. Oh, oh no. no. It's very scary for the mouse. Oh my goodness, this is cool. I gotta say, I'm enjoying uh, Megan's reading. I, like, the cat was pretty scary, I've gotta say. It's better than uh, James Acaster reading James and the Giant Peach, right? I'm bloody sick of James Acaster, I can tell you that. Too specific, isn't it? You're not listening. You've disengaged. And the bee saw a cat. Aww. Yes, they all. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look at that was a great choice, friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The end. After the reading session, Megan, wearing a floral printed Oscar de la Renta dress, posed for photographs with the young patients, showing each one the snaps from an instant camera. Kind, of, it's, it's still doing it though. That's what's so neat about it. Hi, Lucas. Oh, Thank you. Oh, yeah. Give it a little shake and hold it. Let's see. Yeah, come on. Oh, Cinderella. Okay, one, two, three. I can't do it here. Oh, 
I don't know. I've got a bit of a, like I said, a bit of a soft spot for this kind of thing, and um, I can't criticise that. I don't think really. She was doing more than I'll ever do. Don't get any big ideas, anyone, about calling Daniel Boland for some kind of make a wish thing. I ain't doing that. Daniel Boland doesn't do mm, charity of any kind. He is very obnoxious. He speaks about himself in the third person. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I guess it wouldn't be a children's hospital, would it? Let's face it, my demographic. It's probably going to be a fucking cemetery, if anything. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, putting flowers on someone's grave. <laughs> <laughs> the Duchess also met with staff at the Children's Hospital. Yeah, we're ready for you. Okay. Thank you, nurses, for all you do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh, you thought I wasn't going to spot you, didn't you, you dickhead? <laughs> thought you'd join a profession that was 99% women, then smash the gym and the juice, did you? Can you imagine the roid rage fueled sexual escapades of Fuckboy here? Megan took part in CHLA's Literally Healing, a reading program that gifts families at CHLA more than 65,000 books annually. Too many, in my honest opinion. Uh, what are those Mexicans going to do with 65,000 books? <laughs> and provides a unique opportunity to promote literacy, as well as supporting and strengthening patients' families through additional therapeutic literary resources. It's part of the hospital's month-long campaign, Make March Matter. Mmm, not sure about the name there. Make March Matter sounds a little bit too much like Black Lives Matter, right? Don't want to be associated with them, they cause mayhem. Uh, I'd call it March Madness. Make March Mental. We could call it that. An annual fundraiser which unites celebrities, businesses and the greater community in support of its mission of creating hope and building healthier futures. Funds raised will help ensure the hospital can provide sick and critically injured children with the best quality care. The campaign has raised more than $10 million for CHLA since 2016. Well, hey, look, there you go. It's uh, This whole thing's helped raise awareness of whatever that is. So go and give all your money to that. I guess, or something. I don't know, I'm sort of swinging between wanting to uh, uh, offend every demographic there is and uh, and feeling like a protective old mother goose tonight, you know. Mm. I don't know where I am. The Duchess is no stranger to storytelling, having penned her best-selling children's book, The Bench, in 2021. Meghan revealed that her husband Harry and firstborn Archie were the inspiration behind the sweet tale. Just a couple of months after its release, the Duchess read the bench to a group of second graders at a school in Harlem when Harry and Meghan carried out a two-day trip to New York. Ah, oh, those were the days, eh, when Harry and Meghan could safely travel around Harlem without being uh, chased to within an inch of their lives. Um, I don't know. I, I, I've tried to put out a lot of positivity and negativity into the universe today, so hopefully karma... Hopefully karma uh, will be to me uh, like a cat purring in my lap because it loves me. Oh fuck, have I become Paul Breach? Oh, there's a plane crash in Tanzania! Oh, Paul! into the lake.